people pay good money to see this movie. When they go out to a theater, they want cold sodas, hot popcorn, and no monsters in the projection booth. Everyone pretend podcasting isn't boring. Turn it off. top in 96 man but now i feel like we starting to come back down to the ground reality setting in i just don't know how long we're gonna be doing it on that level we all remember the first album that we heard that changed our lives right we have an opportunity to make our version of that for someone else. But that means working with this guy here. No, please. I'm all in. God damn, this place is creepy as fuck. As an artist, what scares you? He is. No, you didn't. Ryan. Once you walk through those doors, you are no longer musicians. You're explorers, searching for the deepest, most personal entity within yourselves. And if that turns into a song, that's all just a bonus. What kind of shit was that? It's just art, man. It's it's not that big of a deal anyway. Hey folks, welcome to a special episode of The Projection Booth. I'm your host, Mike White. On this episode, I'm talking with Ryan Donahoe and Rob Racco, all about their new film, Art of a Hit. The film is now currently streaming. Definitely track it down and have a good time. Thanks so much for listening. I hear you're from uh, Windsor, Rob. Hey, I'm from Windsor, doing some deep digging there. Hey, I'm over here in Detroit. No way, man. I love Detroit. It's one of my favorite cities. It's great to talk with you guys. I'm excited to talk to you about uh, Art of a Hit, but I'd love a little bit of background. Rob, since you're on my screen first, can you tell me a little bit about you and how you got into acting, sir? Actually, it's a great transition to this movie. I got into acting maybe 15 years ago by being a touring drummer at the time, coming to L.A., to follow up being a Windsor boy, always looking at Detroit. I'm like, the market is in America, not in Canada. And so my whole transition was like, how do I get the papers? I came to LA. My band had a couple of singles on local radio out here. I ended up coming alone. And in that alone time, my entrepreneurial hat launched where I'm like, there's opportunity here. I sat with some people. I had no interest of acting. And it fell into it where I met a coach who, who said something that stuck with me, or he's like, you spent your entire youth and, and early 20s creating thunder behind your drums, and now it's time to take that thunder and use it behind your voice. And I'm like, oh. So it made me cry for a long time, and I, I figured it out, and I found a little magic in it. And I'm like, this is very cool. I get to story tell the same way through truth and an inevitability just using my instrument as this thing. And I fell in love. I fell in love. And now to be able to mend the two, being like, I was this musician, I am this actor, here's what we do, is a great little journey. I'm blessed. And Ryan, how about yourself? Uh, so actually, through music as well, I, I moved to New York and started playing drums on the street when I was 17. And about three years into that, I was playing bu buckets at Astor Place. And my soon-to-be manager saw me and came up to me and said she was casting a Levi's ad because normally she was a print casting director that was going to Morocco and would I come audition? And I auditioned for it and I booked it and I went to Morocco and I came back from Morocco and she's, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to act. And so she actually found me classes, found me an agent. And then she was like, I'm normally a casting director, but I think I'd like to manage you. Is that okay? And I was like, of course, I love you. Let's do this. So, and I was lucky enough to book my very first film audition. 
and my very first commercial audition. So <clears throat> my agents were happy. Did you guys happen to have a drum off at any point during the making? He of this would film? win. He would uh, win. So, no, I would no, not. It, Ryan is this undeniable talent. He also knows how to play buckets. No, t- we had a great jam yeah. session. But he was just going off on the floor, and then I pulled out a little bucket, and we had a little jam session. I prefer to create, not to challenge. There's no sense of challenging art. Everyone's unique. So we just found each other's strengths in the room, and it was phenomenal. In the middle of a castle in France, yeah, sign me up. You're a drummer, but you're playing a guitarist in this. So how is that for you? Were you actually playing the guitar? Were you singing in this? Or is this somebody else doing all the that lifting and you're bringing the character to it? No, it's my voice singing we record it all it's a lot of the actual musicians from the movie are playing on the songs too tim joe did a lot of the guitar parts i think charlie did some bass i even had him do some backup vocals i came up with this backup vocal section and he was in the studio but yeah it was me on vocals however i'm not playing guitar on the tracks i did learn them so in the film it's me playing but somebody else recorded it how is that for you? Because I'm sure you guys have both been in ensemble cast before, but now you're in an ensemble plus a band, almost a double ensemble in there because you're going to be playing together, but you're also acting together as well. Yeah. Like I said, like Galen, Charlie, myself, and Tim Joe were all in this movie Band Slam together 15 years ago. And then after Band Slam, Tim Joe and I were in the band for eight years. And then Charlie and Tim Joe were in a band together for, I think they still play. That all felt natural and real already. I had already had a hundred fights with Tim Joe in real life about songs, about that's the wrong chord. We got to change it. We've done that for real. So I think it all felt really easy just to slide back into those things after Tim Joe and I hadn't played together in maybe eight or 12 years or whatever it was, but it was really easy to look at it and be like, you're fucking up. And how did this project come together? It sounds like you almost had a dry run with Band Slam. Be like, you want to come play the drummer and do like a day player role, come to France for a couple days? And I was like, sure, I'll read the script. Let me find out. And then I read the script and I was like, the drummer's a girl, so who am I going to play? They're like, no, we want you to play the lead. And I was like, oh, well, I didn't. Okay, then, yes. You had me at Castle in France, but yeah, that's awesome. I knew Ali, who plays Kristen in the movie, the drummer. We know each other from the LA music scene here in Mutuals, and she got me a Zoom with Charlie and, and Galen, and we just hit it off. And the way I approach independent films is, who do you want to go be a team with for a set amount of time? And those guys sold me on them. And then I got the script, and I'm like, oh, I get to play someone who I haven't played And then you look at location and you're like, oh my God, it's just, you're immersed in this world. Let's go have some fun. And it's exactly what it was. It was intense, long days, but we had fun. We had a trust. We became a family. We became a team. And that's what led to this project happening from my side. Yeah. Yeah. What was your experience like on this? Because I know so much of the time, at least in the beginning of the movie, you are talked about, but not seen necessarily. Yeah. I believe the name Miles is mentioned more than my screen time, which makes it super interesting what he is he's this this throw story you know i was there for about a week and a half and i had joined them after what it must have been two and a half weeks of their initial shoot dates which is also intimidating i'm like hey guys i'm the new guy and we we sat down at a family dinner thing and just became fast friends and you know you realize you should like we said strengths and weaknesses and all that and we all filled it in everyone lifted a finger in this film it was as inspiring as it was to be sworn into this cast, watching this crew work and being able to wear as many hats as they did and create this project was the utmost inspiring thing. Where I'm like, this is what ind- independent filmmaking is. This is it. So, that yeah, very cool. Filmmaking is never easy, but independent filmmaking is way harder than anything that anybody could probably possibly imagine. Uh, what was that like for you guys being part of this crew and being part of this experience? For me, it's just, it's humbling when you see, you know, everyone breaking their back. Like there was not one person who was slipping up. Like every single person was really, really breaking their back. And like, you know, and like, like Rob said, everyone wore a bunch of hats. There wasn't, you know, if I I was a grip at one point, like everybody just, everyone's helping out. Everyone's doing everything they can. We had to do our own wardrobe on a lot of it. And so we're running up and down these castle stairs, like three flights. 
but in between scenes so I can go grab jackets and do whatever. So I think that's the the thing we hated the most at the end of the day was the stairs. There's a lot of stairs. In that thousand year old castle, you also get thousand year old mold. So we all had what we dubbed as castle cough. So that was a thing. That was a real thing. But no, yeah, it was just humbling, man, to see just everyone picking up the slack where it needed to be picked up. Did you actually live in the castle or was there another place to stay at? No, we lived in the castle. I remember flying in and being like, oh, we get to stay here. They've already been there for a couple of weeks. I get to stay here. So I'm hearing stories about this place and trying to navigate. And then you realize when lights are out, whatever that is, 4 a.m. when you're done call, it's 4 a.m. in the middle of nowhere, France, in a castle that's a thousand years old. You get thousand year old creeks, cracks maybe some hauntings, you get all of it. And you're like, oh my God, we're fully immersed in this film. Like, true method musician actor, the hat's on. This is great. Yeah, my room in the film was my room the whole time I was staying there. So whenever we shot in that room, I just had to like move all my bags to the side or put away the wardrobe. But yeah, I was really at the very top of the castle and his room was right next door to mine. So yeah, it was cool. Have you had a chance to see this with an audience yet? No. No, I saw it with one person. So, no. Tonight will be the the first time. I don't do well watching my face on a screen with other people. It's so embarrassing. But I will say this. I would love to see it tonight with everyone looking at the incredible job Ryan did on carrying this. That's going to be involved. Before we wrap, I have to ask about the picture behind you because that looks like uh, our hometowns here with uh, Rob and me represented. Oh, okay. That's right. Uh, yeah, this is actually this is not even my house. <laughs> <laughs> my friend Ariel, who shout out to Ariel Vita. She's a director and she actually really helped out on this film. The big jackets that I wear, she found them. We were looking for them. Up until I flew out to France, we were like dying to find this. I wanted this like iconic Perry Farrell 90s jacket and we couldn't find it. And Ariel found one on Facebook Marketplace and then found another one and drove to meet somebody and shipped it to us in, in France. And luckily it got there because we were, I was dying to find that jacket. But yeah, this is her place, but we we're actually going to do a, a movie together on a boat. And so she has a lot of nautical things themed things up on the wall. Oh, that's uh, Lake Michigan. I can see it from here. And she's and from so, Michigan. That makes sense. There you go. Uh, the Midwest sense. Mafia. Yeah. Hey, oh, look at us. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan and Rob, thank you so much for your time. This was a real pleasure talking with you guys. Mike, it's been a pleasure. Thank you, man. Good talking to you, Mike. All right. Rep have in fun Detroit. at the premiere. Take Mike, care. before you go, I got to show you that. This is my daily hat. Ah, nice. Winter Winter Detroit Detroit. Freedom Best, man. That brings us together, sir. There's only two songs in me, and I just wrote the third. Don't know where I got the inspiration or how I wrote the words. Spent my whole life just digging up my music's shallow grave for the two songs in me and the third one I just made. A rich man once told me, hey, life's a funny thing. A poor man once told me that can't afford to speak now i'm in the middle like a bird without a beak because there's just two songs in me and i just wrote the third don't know where i got the inspiration or how i wrote the words spent my whole life just digging up my music shallow rib for the two songs in me and the third one i just made I went to the president and I asked old what's his name Has he ever gotten writer's block or something like the same? He just started talking like he was on TV If there's just two songs in your boy, what do you want from me? So I bought myself some denim pants and a silver guitar But I politely told ladies you'll still have to call me sir Cause I have to keep my self-respect, I'll never be a star Since there's just two songs in me And this is number three